Hello, I'm Dr. Annadale, and I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's Seminary and University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Our topic for today is how to take notes. Now, the first thing I want to say is that note-taking is not just recording information. It's th instead, it is thinking through the material and embedding it more deeply in your brain. You can do this during class, and even while you're reading, good note-taking will help you to understand better what's been taught even five minutes after the class ends, long before you sit down to actually study for an exam or to review your notes. Um, so take an example. Suppose I say in a class on Kant that experience is never numeral. And you write this down. Experience is not new, new how do you spell that? New, numeral. Okay. You write it down, you write it down over again, put it on a flashcard, you memorize it, and later on you're able to give that response. What is experience like? Oh, well you say it's not numeral. That's fine, but in the course of doing this, what have you learned? You've learned very little. You've trained yourself to respond, like to a bell, but you've not actually learned anything. You've not learned what those words mean or how they're significant. Now, my job is your learning, and one of the ways I'm going to help you learn is by giving you a good note-taking system. And now, as always, use what works for you. But if you don't have a note-taking system that you're using currently, here's one that I use, and it's the Cornell note-taking system. It involves uh, using a piece of lined paper, standard lined paper, with two additions. The first change you're going to make to your paper is to draw a line two inches from the right margin all the way down the length of the paper. Two inches, if you don't have a ruler, is about the distance between your fingertip and the second knuckle of your index finger. Um, <clears throat> then you want to draw a line across the page about two or three inches from the bottom of the page. What you have now is a paper with three regions on it. You have a column on the right, a box on the bottom, and the main body of the paper, which is uh, <clears throat> the majority of the paper. Uh, the right column is for vocabulary and keywords. Now, when you find a word that you don't know in the lecture or reading, say a word like noumenal, you should jot it down in the right column and leave some space to define it. Get a definition later, either from a dictionary or from a glossary in the book or from your professor. Um, after class and after reading, you should then read over your notes and jot down keywords every couple of lines, one to two words only, uh, about the highlights of the lecture, the highlights of the reading. Uh, what you're doing here is creating an index for your notes so you can tell at a glance, oh, that's the day we talked about the noumena, that's the day we talked about courage, that's the day we talked about quantitative methods. You can tell at a glance what's going on on each page. Now the bottom box is for summary and questions. After class or after reading the chapter, Write down a one-sentence summary, in your own words, of what the main point was. You can use several sentences if you think there were several points, but you've got to be able to fit it in that small box. Uh, try this as well in the bottom section. Write down a question that was answered in the lecture, or a question that you now know the answer to now that you understand the material that was given in the lecture. Uh, or try to think of a question that someone who missed the lecture would not be able to answer. Now the main part of the paper uh, is still given to your notes. Uh, here you should be jotting down the main points of the lecture or the reading. For readings, try to give one line or so to each paragraph in the reading, getting the main point, expressing it in your own words. For lectures, uh, don't just be a stenographer. Don't record what the professor says word for word. A computer can do that much better than you can. Instead, write down the important concepts. Use your judgment as you go along to see what's important. You want to write down important concepts, insights, and certainly anything the professor says two or more times. What you're doing here is you're already using your intelligence to sort out important from unimportant details in the material that you confront. Now in all three of these boxes, you're doing more than just writing words that you hear. You are processing material in your brain. You are creating a new product. You are creating your notes. And this creating is itself a valuable intellectual activity. It is going to assist your understanding and your memory of the material. Now, I've put a link in the description below to a Cornell note-taking paper generator, uh, which you can use to create Cornell notes of various sizes. I hope you find this a helpful system, and uh, thanks for watching today. Goodbye.